All right, welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition. So I've talked with a, a number of people, spent quite a bit of time. My advisors are ready to report in. Is something wrong with my HBO Plus settings? Uh, yes, there is something wrong. It's been like that for a while now, I guess. Do I really need to close the game for a second? Yes, I do. But it's really annoying to deal with. Anyway. Or do I? Inquisitor? And what else did Lady Forsythia say? That she'd rather drown herself than help the Inquisition. Anything else? She said she'd have us flogged alive if we allied with her brother. That does sound like her. Cheer up, Josie. We at least have her attention. You always do find the brighter side of things. We are in the midst of cementing an alliance with Lady Forsythia of Nevara, your worship. It's become a somewhat delicate task. She'll have us flogged alive? I believe she meant flayed alive. Her ladyship tends to confuse metaphors when she's excitable. I dissuaded her from sending soldiers when she learned we'd struck an accord with a brother she's feuding with. Lady Forsythia simply employs a Colorful manner of speech. You're rather good-natured about threats of death and dismemberment. They are chiefly bluster, Inquisitor. Most of them. But I confess I do miss my staff from the Embassy in Antiva. It was always useful to discuss the day's visitors with them. I have time. If you'd like to review things with me. I wouldn't wish to impose. If it were imposing, I wouldn't have offered. Well, I admit, there are a few potential alliances it would be good to discuss. Right on the parlor floor. In front of everyone at the soiree. Who does such a thing in front of their guests? The Duke of Kellington, apparently. And then there's calls lurking. It frightens our guests half to death. Lord Genar still won't respond to our letters. And Sarah. Can she not find a single overshirt with that mustard taint on it? Then there's Dorian. The man refuses to take anything seriously unless it suits its whim. Not to mention... Oh, oh goodness. Have we been here an hour already? It went by so quickly, I didn't even notice. You're far too polite. I didn't intend to go on for so long. You must think me quite the gossip. Spending time with such an engaging woman is never unpleasant, Lady Montillier. Goodness! I'm... well, I'm, I'm glad I haven't wasted your day. Well, I've taken up quite enough of your time already. Until next time, Your Worship. My mouse? Uh, well, my... yeah, my mouse wasn't working. Yeah. Spared no expense. What the... What do the people make of us? We've gathered many favors among the nobility. They will be gently reminded of this. Let's speak later. Farewell. It's good to see you. 
Tell me about the Montiliers. Well, uh, my parents are alive and in good health. Uh, they live in our estate in Antiva City. Of my four siblings, most attend to the running of the family vineyards. <sighs> that reminds me. I must ask someone to make sure Yvette attends the spring reception at the palace. My youngest sister has no head for social engagements. Why are you overseeing your siblings' social lives? It's Antivan custom. After a certain age, the heir apparent runs the family's estate to prove they're worthy of succession. If you're unfit for the task, the heads of the house, usually one's parents, may decree a new heir. What do these Antivan heads of the household do if they don't run it? They work and provide guidance. I've taken advice from my parents. Well, mostly mother. Father is more of an artist. It's rather gauche, but we never can dissuade him from running his own salons. Between him and my siblings, mother is looking forward to my taking over the estate. Can you run your family's business and be the Inquisition's ambassador? I won't let it interfere with the quality of my work for the Inquisition. I assure you. But managing the estate is my duty. As much work as it is, I will not shirk it. Is running your family's estate that important to you? I'm responsible for their welfare. A Montelier never shuns their familial duty. Taxing, as those duties can sometimes be. Maybe your siblings could help lighten your burden. You don't know them. But Lorien in charge, or Antoine, or Yvette? No, truly, it must be me. Where were you raised, Josephine? I was born in Antiva City, but when I turned 15, Mother declared I'd attend finishing school in Val Royo. Oh, but I bowled into her skirts the day I had to leave. Do they have to pry your fingers off the door frame as well? Admittedly, I may have been a trifle sheltered, but my mother only wanted the best for me. Living in Orlais was an education in itself. What did you learn at this finishing school in Val Royale? Among other things, mathematics, rhetoric, poetry, history, logic, and a great deal of etiquette. I still remember Madame Beventir's switch on my knuckles when I forgot the basic tenets of Nevaran dining customs. For a dowager approaching her 80th year, she had quite the arm. How did the younger you like Val Royale when you arrived? Have you ever stepped into a new city and felt the buildings couldn't possibly be real? That was Val Royale to me. So beautifully foreign, I gaped at its spires for months. Does Antiva City have nothing that compares to Val Royale? Antiva City is a jewel among the capitals. <sighs> but I did not appreciate that before I traveled. There are multitudes of places I'd like to see. Sahara, the Anderfeld, whatever lies past the Amaranthine Ocean. You said the Montelliers used to run an entire trading fleet. What happened? There was a scandal in Val Royale more than an age ago. The Montelliers were forbidden from trading with Orlais. Our personal fortunes never quite rebounded. Does anyone in Orlais even remember what that scandal was? I doubt it. But the injunction persists. What exactly happened? An affair with a minor lord. Perhaps. Most other details are lost. Are you saying your family's livelihood was ruined because of a love affair no one even remembers? Essentially. Our legion politics are full of these unhappy little missteps, Inquisitor. You haven't really gone into detail about how you know Liliana. We met... Oh, let me think. We met the last few years of my schooling, but we became friends after I became ambassador to Olay. It seems terrifyingly long ago now. How exactly did you and Liliana reconnect in the Inquisition? I discovered my family had been overcharging a merchant we traded with for months. Our name carries a great deal of trust in Antiva. I spent weeks arranging a string of favors as suitable recompense. Apparently satisfied, the merchant extended me an invitation to her estate. Leliana greeted me in place of the merchant. I assume the entire problem was some form of trial. 
You assume correctly. Leliana claims she needed someone of painful integrity for the Inquisition. I accepted, once she finally explained what it was. Do you remain close? Yes, but she's grown so much more distant than the outgoing woman I met in Valroyo. Leliana used to wander the Orlesian courts, singing the sweetest songs, charming the greatest wits. Now she collects secrets and takes risks that would make empires tremble. I worry, but she will not hear it. Does Liliana confide in you? If she enjoys revisiting our more disastrous adventures, Liliana used to concoct the most ridiculous plans. Run if you ever see her with a twine ball, a measuring stick, and a handkerchief. Who rules Antiva? Officially, the Principality of Antiva is governed by His Majesty King Fugelno II. In reality, Antiva's merchant princes rule the country in everything but name. Quite loudly, I might add. What sort of dealings did you have with these merchant families? As ambassador, I attended Privy Council meetings in a mediatory capacity. May I just say, one has never heard an argument until they've sat in on 15 princes howling down each other's tariff suggestions. I'd storm out of any meeting that came to that. It would be fitting. Dramatic exits are always a favorite. It's all a part of life in Antiva. Our traditions value passion and romance. A certain exuberance of style. Are you positive you're Antivan? I can be most exuberant when it's called for. Just at the right moments and in a proper fashion. Might we speak of something else? What's the land like in Antiva? The setter areas are quite lush. The vineyards run as far as the eye can see in some places. Antiva City, however, perches right up against the Rialto Bay. That's what I miss most. The sea crashing against the maze of the docks. I have difficulty seeing you wandering around a trading port. Everyone in Antiva City spends time by the ships, my lord. The finest restaurants and poets all make their habitation by the sea. The waterfronts never still. Lanterns are lit along the promenade, no matter what the weather. Are you ever homesick? Occasionally. When a breeze stirs the trees in the garden, I sometimes pretend it's the sound of the surf. <sighs> Do you know, I even miss those terrible squawking birds infesting the harbor. My youngest sister used to throw whole loaves of bread to the gulls. Silly thing. Let's speak later. Farewell. Well, that's very interesting. So, what's next? Obsidian. What? Fuck that! That was not worth it. She's got two hours. Scout it Haven Ruin. It was unusual. Is he always so blunt? <laughs> yes. Hmm. All right, I can do that. I can send Colin. Hmm. I've arranged an accord between the Marquis and the Dowager. Wonder of wonders. Perhaps they can be useful to us after all.
As much as I like to do that, it would probably not be a good idea. Uh, no, wait. I want elf root. That means going for Feralden. Yeah. Let's see what we have. Okay. This is a delicate matter. So, I don't want to step on too many toes. Okay, so that's about it in certain areas. Let's continue. Cancel, I'm not gonna go there. Instead, I'm gonna go right here. There is a cave entrance that I see in a landmark. I'm gonna go clear that. Interesting. So the bridge goes all the way here interesting very 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 interesting anyway the ryan is kind of useless on a gameplay level vivian is better for healer solace is better as a damage dealer If only I could have a larger party. That's the annoying part, isn't it? Hell, I'd even... Hell, I'd even take a game where enemies had more HP, damage and all that. Well, not damage, fuck that noise. Um, but no, more resistances or more HP. If enemies scaled up, depending on your party size. Preferably, they should be a balance around four, but the option to scale up would be very much welcome. I would personally appreciate them. Although, obviously, that would create other issues beyond... Beyond the amount of enemies you would fight. It's, you know, pathfinding issues as well. Inventory. Well, I probably should give her a rune on her sword. Uh, it's just sword. What the fuck am I talking about anyway? Cunning. Magic defense. Okay, first off, I'll be upgrading. Um, I'll be putting some runes on this. Or I'll take the ones that she has already on her armor and put it on some new one. Interesting. The beast fight. I can thank Dar and Bull for that. No! Damn it. No! That was not an uh, ideal way to go down.
Probably a large cave, or n maybe not. They couldn't mount up for some reason. Anyway. I mean, I can go Varric, no problem. I can even go with Iron Ball, but... Eh, whatever. Ah, there we go. Cave entrance right there. Ooh, barrier. All right. So the Venatori want to keep us out. Shall we disappoint them?
a dungeon, I imagine. Wow. Preserve notes, okay. Before I do that, there are other things, such as note, manifest, free staves, properties unknown, okay. Mm -hmm. did something this horrible and wrote about it. These people are wrong in every possible way. Well, I'm gonna go inside the dungeon next, although I probably should have, I'll do that in off screen anyway with Sarah's armor, um, but yeah, that that's about it. Costine here, signing out, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Thank you all for watching and stay tuned for more.